Is it a waste of money to water cool a mid-tier graphics card? Well, I guess today we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. This week's sponsor is me. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way is to pick up a t-shirt at cybercputech.com. All my t-shirts are extremely high quality and durable. These are the same shirts I wear in videos. So if you like the shirt I'm wearing, then head over to cybercputech.com and pick yourself up one today. Who would water cool a 3060? Last week, we installed a drain valve in this system here so we could install this. This is a full cover water block for an EVGA 3060, the same card that we have in the system right now. Now, technically, you don't wanna water cool a mid-tier graphics card. The reason is that if you just use the money for the water block to buy a better card, then you'll get more value for your dollar. As an example, the 3060 in this system costs $370, and an EVGA 3070 XC Black costs $580. That's a $210 price difference. This water block right here set me back $190. There's no way a 3060 will ever match the performance of a 3070. As it is, we still haven't come close to matching the 3060 Ti. So, for another 20 bucks, you could have a much faster card. Of course, the 3070 would not be water-cooled at that price, but even air-cooled, it would be much faster. However, there's more reasons to water-cool a graphics card than performance. I mean, that's why we're doing it, but there really are other benefits. The first one is simple, and it's looks. A water-cooled GPU looks amazing. The next benefit is noise. A water-cooled graphics card will run much cooler and much quieter than an air-cooled card. And finally, there's the package size. A water-cooled GPU is much smaller than an air-cooled one. Now, keep in mind, you still have to have all the other cooling components in your loop, which does make it bigger, but those pieces can be arranged in different areas of the case. So if you have a really compact system that you wanna not only be really quiet, but also have a lot of performance, then it's hard to beat water cooling. Keep in mind, the 3070 that I was speaking about before is a full length card, while the 3060 in this system is much shorter. In fact, without modifying my loop, a full length graphics card wouldn't even fit in this case. The pump and reservoir are mounted right in the way of a full length graphics card. With all this in mind, none of these reasons are why we're doing it. Rather, it's a continuation of seeing how close to a 3060 Ti we can make this card. In the last video, I couldn't get this card overclocked over 180 megahertz on the core because of what I believe to be temperature. So, like I stated in that video, the best way to drop temperature is with water cooling. So that's what we're doing. There are three things that determine the boost speed of a graphics card. Those are power limit, voltage, and temperature. By water cooling, we're eliminating one of those factors right off the bat, and that's temperature, because a water-cooled GPU is going to run much cooler than even the best GPU air cooler. By water cooling, we also can much more efficiently use our power limit. The EVGA 3060 XC Black that we're using in this system has a power limit of 170 watts, and that can be increased to a max of 190 watts. Apart from performing a shunt mod on this card, that's all the power we have. By keeping the temperatures down, the card will be able to boost further and use less power. This will help us get more out of the relatively low power limit that this card has. So, with all that said, let's shut this system down and get this water block installed and see if we blew a bunch of money for nothing.
Well, it definitely made the system look a lot better. Excuse the continuity error. I've got a new shirt on and my hair's a little bit longer because this part of the video was actually filmed a week after the part you just watched. After I installed the water block, I spent a week testing it so I could do this part of the video. With that said, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an increase to the overclock with water. This was unfortunate because I was hoping to get at least a little bit more, but it is what it is. However, it did help our temperature, and I mean, it helped it a lot. On air, this car typically ran in the high 70s, sometimes even 80C, but on water, it stays in the high 50s. Unfortunately though, this also raised the temperature of my CPU by a couple degrees. This system is running a single 360 rad. The CPU isn't overclocked, but with the GPU overclocked, it's about to the limit of its thermal capacity, at least with the fans on low. I may add a 240 at some point, especially since I'm probably gonna be upgrading the CPU next. However, with the fans turned up, it works just fine. In regards to performance, since we didn't get any more of an overclock out of this GPU, it really didn't do much to increase our performance. I had planned to do my regular graphs showing the performance change in each benchmark, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that because we only averaged about a 1% increase in performance across the board with the overclock. I also benchmarked it with and without the overclock just to see what kind of performance increase we could expect by just going to water. And you know, we still averaged pretty much 1% in most games, but I did get as high as 3%. This is due to the fact that the GPU can maintain its boost for longer on water than it can on air. In fact, with and without the overclock, both maintained a pretty consistent boost speed. It didn't fluctuate that much at all. Here's a graph from MSI Afterburner of an extended play of Red Dead Redemption 2. The GPU would boost to 2115 and pretty much stay there the entire time. It never fell below 2100. And you know, that's not bad because it would regularly fall below that when it was on an air cooler. In fact, it wasn't uncommon to see the 1800s. And speaking of the air cooler, I would run the fans at 100% when I was overclocked and it was extremely loud. Now it's dead silent. The case fans do ramp up a little bit more with the added thermal load of the GPU block now in the loop, but it's nothing compared to the sound of the GPU when it was on an air cooler. In fact, even if I turn the radiator fans up to their absolute max, it's nowhere near as loud as the GPU air cooler. So, was water cooling this GPU worth it? Well, it depends. It is running a lot cooler, and because of that, it's able to maintain a much more consistent boost clock. It's also dead silent, but it cost us almost $200. In fact, it was over $200 if you consider the hard line and fittings that I had to use in order to install it. For $200, I could have easily bought a 3070 instead of a 3060. The 3070 would have been considerably faster right out of the box. Of course, even if I got a 3070, I still would have overclocked it. And the same issues with cooling and fan noise would have been the same. So, chances are I would have had to water cool that one too. That would have made the $580 3070 a $780 graphics card, but for $780, I could have gotten a 3080. I think you can see where this vicious cycle starts. The 3060 is a great card, and now that it's water-cooled, it's even better. It's definitely not the best graphics card that you can get for the price we spent, but it's very capable, and I've been having an absolute blast gaming on it. In fact, I'm currently working on a review of a 1440p ultra-wide monitor that I've been using to game on with this very card at 1440. Not every game will run great at that resolution, but most of them run pretty good. Stay tuned if you'd like to see a review of that monitor. I should have a video coming out pretty soon for it. But you know, I still don't recommend water cooling a mid-tier graphics card. But if I had to do this all over again, I, I would have still water cooled this one. Typically, you can't even get a full cover water block for a mid-tier GPU. However, Primo Chill had this bike ski water block in stock, and when I saw it, I just had to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. When I ordered this one, there was only a few left, so you better jump on it if you want one. 
I don't know if they plan on making more of these once they sell out. But with all that said, if your system is currently water cooled, or if you want to water cool it, but hardline tubing kind of scares you, then check out this video where I show how to bend and install hardline tubing. It's really not as hard as you might think. In fact, it's kind of easy. Anyway, you guys have a great day.